Hello, everyone. Welcome to Eagle News Live. Coming to you from Washington, D.C., I am Eliza Gonzalez, Manglik Mott. Today, we have a sit-down interview with internal medicine physician and former virologist Amorsolo Sugitan Jr. as he shares with Eagle News things we need to know about the coronavirus COVID-19 that is creating, in some places, mass panic. Dr. Sugitan explains to us, in layman's terms, facts about coronavirus COVID-19. So, COVID-19 is now, what it actually stands for is Coronavirus Disease uh -huh. 2019. The virus that causes COVID-19, as we are all familiar with, is called a coronavirus. So coronaviruses represent a group of viruses mm -hmm. that have been discovered in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. And these viruses are known to infect both humans and animals. Mm -hmm. And some animals can transmit these coronaviruses to humans. Mm -hmm. So some forms of common cold are caused by coronaviruses. Okay. So we know of at least four okay. of these uh, coronaviruses that are causing the common cold. Mm -hmm. But it has garnered special attention. Probably you are familiar with a SARS mm -hmm. uh, coronavirus epidemic mm -hmm. that occurred in about, what is it, 2003, mm -hmm. in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And that one actually infected about 8,100 Mm -hmm. people worldwide mm -hmm. and among those that were infected mm -hmm. about 700 plus people okay. actually died okay. and then in 2012 another coronavirus uh, broke out and it's called the MERS cov mm -hmm. it's the Middle East respiratory syndrome mm -hmm. and at that time it was only confined to the Arabian Peninsula mainly mm -hmm. and for that particular virus about close to 2,600 people got mm -hmm. infected mm -hmm. and out of those um, about 30 percent or so mm -hmm. actually also perished. Okay. So they're garnering special attention mm -hmm. because of all of these outbreaks mm -hmm. that come and go okay. and the COVID-19 virus is also one of these uh, group of viruses. Mm -hmm. We ask Dr. Sugitan how far worse COVID-19 is compared to other known coronavirus diseases. Here's what he said. It's hard to tell because there's still so many things that we don't know yet about okay. COVID-19. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the number of people that is already affected or mm -hmm. infected, mm -hmm. it looks like it is actually more easily spread. Okay. In terms of the number of people who also get sick okay it looks like it's also mm -hmm. on its way there okay. but there's just a lot of unknowns with this particular virus that it's too early to say okay. how it will actually behave so but we can just go and look past mm -hmm. the other viruses and learn from what they have to teach us given that there are a lot of unknowns about covid19 we ask is this enough reason to panic i think people tend to be fearful of what they don't know. Okay. So that's probably the, the reaction that we're getting, all of these fears, all of this uh, hysteria about the virus is that it's new. Mm -hmm. uh, as the name implies, it's novel, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So we don't know exactly how this came to be, although we have some ideas. And right now, um, there seems to be no treatment for it yet. There's no vaccine yet, mm -hmm. and somehow, sometimes the media plays a role in, mm -hmm. you know, making a hype out mm -hmm. of all of this. Mm -hmm. But for us just to be able to be informed mm -hmm. and be educated about what this virus actually does and mm -hmm. what it doesn't, mm -hmm. I think that that's the number one uh, thing that you can do to prevent or to fight against fear. Mm -hmm. So. Ignorance breeds fear, mm -hmm. so the more that you actually shed light and the more that you know about it, yes. then... Coronavirus COVID-19 has been compared a lot with the influenza virus or the common flu. Dr. Sugitan shares with us how these two present very similar cases. So with a presentation, if you get infected with the flu viruses, mm -hmm. then these are the seasonal flu viruses mm -hmm. that we often get, the H1N1, the H3N2, mm -hmm. the A, influenza A, mm -hmm. uh, influenza B. So the presentation of the cases when they investigated 
the first few cases of those infected in Wuhan mm -hmm. with a COVID-19 virus. Mm -hmm. They presented, almost all of them have fever. Okay. And then about 75% uh, have coughs. Mm -hmm. Then they also have shortness of breath. Mm -hmm. And they also have muscle aches. Mm -hmm. And if you can, as you can tell, all of very these similar. are mm -hmm. very similar to flu. Mm -hmm. So it's quite indistinguishable clinically. Okay. If you look at the symptoms that these people, infected people have, it's very hard, mm -hmm. very difficult to tell mm -hmm. whether they get infected by the flu mm -hmm. or the coronavirus. Okay. So that's why they were saying, so a lot of experts are saying that um, we should be more mindful and we should be, at least for now, mm -hmm really be more conscious about our uh, vaccination status against the flu mm -hmm. because that's something that we are more likely to get, contract. Mm -hmm. to contract mm -hmm. or uh, actually to be infected with mm -hmm. rather than the COVID-19. Right now, there is a race to develop the vaccine to help protect against COVID-19. Dr. Sugitan explains to us the tedious process in developing one. I think that the help that the U.S. government has extended mm -hmm. to all of the pharmaceutical companies mm -hmm. and their collaboration with them is going to have a big boost in terms of the timeline mm -hmm. of vaccine production. But typically, when you do have a vaccine, mm -hmm. uh, you should be able to manufacture it on a large scale. Okay. So sometimes those technical things are easier to accomplish. Mm -hmm. But what hampers the development of the vaccine is how it's how is it how how are we going to demonstrate that it's safe mm -hmm. and that it's effective mm -hmm. um, and we usually test this first in animal models mm -hmm. and when you give a vaccine you have to play with the dosing mm -hmm. so you have to find the right dosage that will give you an idea how protective it might be mm -hmm. and when you immunize animals you have to let them build their own immunity mm -hmm. so it takes time, so probably about one month or two months, mm -hmm. and you have to decide how many doses do you have to administer, mm -hmm. one dose versus two dose, mm -hmm. and how uh, how far apart mm -hmm. from each other should mm -hmm. they be. Mm -hmm. And once you have demonstrated that it's actually safe, how effective is it? So you should be able to challenge them with uh, what we call wild type virus, the actual virus that's circulating, mm -hmm. the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And if this animals uh, demonstrate that they can actually resist getting infected or if they do get infected that they can resolve their infections quickly then that's a good sign okay. but all of these sometimes so these are in animal models mm -hmm. it does not necessarily always translate that what happens in animal models will also be uh, what is going to be uh, reflected in humans mm -hmm. so there might be some nuances on how we are going to react on it but the basic um, limitations in terms of the timeline is just making sure that we demonstrate that it is safe mm -hmm. and that it is effective if we are going to vaccinate a lot of people. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure that those two particular criteria are met. So it usually takes from their projections, it's about 12 months mm -hmm. to 18 months. Okay. So we have to understand that vaccine development or production of vaccine, it occurs in several phases. Mm -hmm. And even the testing of the vaccine once it's made also undergoes through these phases. Mm -hmm. One of the challenges for this particular uh, coronavirus mm -hmm. vaccine is that while they were able to probably identify a particular target that the vaccine should be able to block or the immunity that it will generate will be able to block, we can make those proteins, mm -hmm. we can make them to be a little bit immunogenic or it can be eliciting a good immune response mm. but we have to make sure that they are safe and that they are effective okay. by explaining the process it seems like it's tedious and it's going to take a while mm -hmm. um, the u.n warns of a fear pandemic mm. because people they're waiting they're waiting for, mm. for how to protect themselves why do you think this should be addressed as aggressively as how we are addressing the virus. Yes, because right now, um, this fear uh, that you're describing, mm -hmm. there has been some recent reports that Asian Americans are unjustifiably being attacked. Some of them, like in New York, there was a lady who was mm -hmm. attacked just because she was wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. And probably the person who attacked her was thinking that she might be spreading mm -hmm. the coronavirus mm -hmm. just because of her ancestry. 
And we have to make sure that we also tell people that this is really not the way that the virus will be... The virus does not discriminate who it's going to infect. And if you don't have any of those risk factors, like if you haven't been to the countries where there's still a widespread uh, outbreak of this virus, Iran, China, of course, South Korea, Italy, um, then you should be able to be, you know, the risk is really low. Mm -hmm. So we should not target a particular ethnic group or even Asians mm -hmm. uh, because that is unfounded fear. Okay. So in terms of fear, we already discussed about what if you really don't know what it is, mm -hmm. then you really will be fearful of it. Mm -hmm. And the way to just uh, think about how to approach this is just like any respiratory virus. Mm -hmm. Okay, you always have to have good hand washing precautions. Mm -hmm. So make sure that your hands are clean. Mm -hmm. Make sure that if you have not washed your hands, do not touch your face, mm -hmm. do not touch your eyes, your mouth, or your nose. Mm -hmm. So some common sense practices mm -hmm. like that. Um, avoid people who might be sick, mm -hmm. or if you are the sick one, take extra precaution not to spread it by wearing a mask, for example, mm -hmm. so that you can contain whatever it is and confine it okay isolate yourself if you can mm -hmm. um, and you can always go and disinfect the surfaces that are typically uh, used in your home probably right now the phones your phone <laughs> because your phone can just be mm -hmm. placed on a surface that is not clean mm -hmm. and then when you're taking a call you might answer it and it's actually near your mouth mm -hmm. you're uh, touching your mm -hmm. cheek mm -hmm. So all of these things add up. Mm -hmm. So those are the precautions that you would do anyway, mm -hmm. if it's just the flu or if it's just a common cold. And just taking the same kind of precautions mm -hmm. should be the right thing to do in approaching the coronavirus. You said that the virus does not discriminate. Uh, that's when it comes to who it infects, yes. right? But fa uh, the fatalities are mostly the elderly and the elderly uh, isn't that discrimination too <laughs> no so only because probably it's a good point that you have brought up but it's usually the elderly mm -hmm. just like in the flu most of the people who are typically affected severely mm -hmm. are infants the elderly and people with chronic conditions people who have asthma people who have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease people who have heart condition, people who actually uh, are, their immune system is compromised, probably if they're having chemotherapy because they might have cancer, or if they have, di if they have diabetes. Mm -hmm. So all of these are risk factors for them to come down. If they do get infected by something like this, then it will take them a little bit longer or if they have the symptoms, it will be typically more severe because of these uh, other factors that they have. But if you're typically, uh, let's say, a typical healthy person, a relatively young, they don't have to fear that much. I'm not saying that they will not be infected. Of course, there will always be an exception. But if they do get infected, the likelihood that it will just be presenting as a mild infection is higher. So that's why we take precautions when we have... Uh, these relatives who are not too healthy to begin with, mm -hmm. that we protect ourselves, that we have to be more cautious when we're around them, mm -hmm. because if they do catch it, then the, the, like, the chances that they will have a more serious condition is greater than if we are the ones who actually get infected. Okay. Um, you mentioned if someone feels like he or she has the the virus or he or she feels sick mm -hmm. uh, it's a precaution to wear a mask yes. to 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 not spread it mm -hmm. will masks help also others to protect themselves from from getting, getting infected mm -hmm. so i know that there has been some <laughs> what is it panic mass buy, buy, panic yes, buying of no, masks, masks nowadays so what the guidelines currently recommend is that only those who are infected really should be the ones wearing the mask because if you cough if you sneeze you're releasing thousands of droplets 
of uh, secretions that might contain the virus. So it's not really to protect themselves, but to be able to be, what is it, confinement, containment of this particular secretion so that they cannot spread it to others. Mm -hmm. If you're relatively healthy, you wear a mask. Um, what studies are saying is that if you will have to use the mask every 20 minutes, because once your mask gets a lot of moisture, so when you're breathing out, there's uh, moisture in there. And in 20 minutes, this kinds of moisture already affects its ability to filter out some organisms. So it's not going to be useful anyway. Mm -hmm. So only those who are infected should wear it. Mm -hmm. And for people who are healthy, just make sure that we still follow all of those precautionary measures that I mentioned mm -hmm. uh, a while ago. And mm -hmm. if you have to cough or if you have to sneeze and you use a tissue, make sure that you throw the tissue straight yeah. into the trash. Mm -hmm. Or if you have to cough and there's really no tissue lying around, mm -hmm. always use the sleeve. Mm -hmm. The WHO advises the public to take precautionary measures to protect ourselves from getting infected by COVID-19. Dr. Sugitan echoes the same. Washing with soap and water for mm -hmm. at least 20 seconds mm -hmm. is still the preferred way. Because if you just uh, wash your hands vigorously, it's very effective, okay? Um, if you have to use a sanitizer, make sure that the alcohol content is at least 60%. Okay, okay? so those will work towards decreasing the number of uh, infectious particles on, on your hands. Um, but it's also very important that we, as I mentioned a while ago, clean all of those surfaces that will typically get contaminated, even the doorknobs that we use. Mm -hmm. Make sure to clean those because a lot of people touch them and if they're not really mindful of where their hands have been, so that is also a potential source of infection. Is the common flu really more of a concern than the coronavirus? Right now it is, because there's still a lot of people who do not believe that they should get immunized with a flu vaccine mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. They have this myth of if they do get vaccinated with the flu, they will actually get the flu. So that's been a myth that all of the healthcare professionals are trying to, to combat, mm -hmm. okay? But in this particular scenario, you have people who are, or who must be protected, mm -hmm. as I've mentioned, the elderly, mm -hmm. the pregnant, pregnant women, and all of those who have those comorbid conditions. We should make a real effort to get them vaccinated mm -hmm. because the chances are right now they will have been infected with a flu rather than with a COVID-19 virus. Dr. Sugitan says although the virus does not discriminate who it infects, there is no reason to panic as long as we remain vigilant and keep ourselves informed. Just stay cool. Stay calm because this too will pass. Okay? If we just add on to the hysteria uh, and all of this fear-mongering, we're not helping the situation. So just make sure that we remain vigilant and we remain... Uh, updated on what health authorities always have to advise us to do mm -hmm. because they have more expertise mm -hmm. in these kinds of situations. Dr. Amorsolo Sugitan Jr. is part of the team that developed the live attenuated vaccine against the, 20, the 2009 H1N1 swine influenza pandemic virus. Thank you, Dr. Sugitan. As of today's broadcast, the states of Washington, California, Florida and Maryland have declared a coronavirus emergency. Thank you for joining us. I am Eliza Gonzalez Manglikmot, one with 25.